Okay, let's uh, take a look at these. Uh, I'm a little wary of question 5, but anyway, we'll come there. Uh, what is the procurement type in the material master for finished goods that we only make? In-house production. In production. Uh, what are task lists and what are the different types of task lists in SAP? Task list, uh, list of operating right, the actual names. Uh, routings, rate routings and master recipes. Okay. Uh, there's one more that will be when, when we come to maintenance, we'll see that. Okay, uh, so this question actually occurs twice more. I don't know why I fell in love with that. Um, question three What are PRTs? Production resources. Production resources and tools. I mean, just the actual literal uh, expansion is that, but they are tools used in manufacturing. What field in the work center master record controls the type of activities which it could be used? Right, which field, which actual field controls task list usage, task list usage, right, uh, that those are the kinds of activities in which can be used, which it can be used, task list usage. Uh, okay, question 5, I think we should skip it, I, uh, I intended B, C, D, that's what I intended, but you can also argue for A, I mean, uh, I mean, yeah, it says like cross determination. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so. For everything. Yeah, I intended B, C, D, but for A, I should have come up with something a little more outrageous. <laughs> I didn't do that. Uh, six. What mechanism enables connecting a work center to controlling? Cost center. The cost center, right? The work center is assigned. There's a cost center tab on which you indicate which cost center it belongs to. I mean. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's the connection, the cost center attribution of the work center. What name is given? Okay, this we have done. Seven we have done. Uh, what is the analog of production order in process manufacturing? Process, process order. Process order. Okay. Give an example of a fixed time element in a routing operation. Set up time. Set up time. Yeah, set up time could be a fixed time element in a routing. Uh, variable time. Machining time, operation time, whatever, right? So in the actual question, they may give you something that you that you select. Uh, bomb components not assigned to an operation and routing are assumed by the system to be required when? Start, first Start of the first operation, right. At, they are assumed to be required for the first operation. In addition to bomb components, name one other thing that can be assigned to an operation. PRT. PRT. Instructions. Yeah, document items, those kinds of things, right. PRT, okay. Uh, which of the following things do formula, key, formula keys in work centers help with? A, B, C, uh, calculation of cost, calculation of capacities, and scheduling. ABD. ABD. Yeah, activity based costing is connected to work centers, but it has nothing to do with formula keys. Okay, because it's just, just like activity based costing that we spoke about earlier where you know the work center is providing an activity and this is the uh, you know per unit cost of the activity right so formula keys don't play a role there uh, and of course e is not right because that is task list usage it has nothing to do with formula keys okay uh, what is the name oh fine 14 is done 15 when a work center is assigned to an operation in a routing what part of the information from the work center master might be used to determine the operation time? Scheduling. 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 Scheduling is the general view, right? Yeah. The scheduling view has all the information required to carry out this. Scheduling view. So I said name of the view, which is the scheduling view. Scheduling. The view is just called scheduling. In the cost center master, the view is just called scheduling. Uh, PRTs might be needed to produce a finished product. In which master data pertaining to the product are they included? Routing. PRTs are assigned to an operation in the routing, right? 
So I said, that's why I said broadly master data pertaining to production. But that, you know, routing is master data pertaining to production. And PRTs are assigned to an operation in the routing. Yeah, routing is master data. <coughs> so I don't know. I don't know if these are the things that will trip you up in the in the exam. So, so <laughs> which of the following steps in the manufacturing process can be automated? B. BD. BD. Yeah. As per that circle and yeah. the ones marked with the one, right? BD. So order release can be automated and material withdrawal posting can be automated. Okay. Is it possible to create production order directly without a planned order? Yes. Okay. Uh, you know, order without a routing or bomb, order with a routing, order with routing and bomb. You can directly create them. Those are the scenarios. Which of the following can be assigned to an operation in a production order? A, uh, yeah. A, C, D. They, they are the ones which can be assigned to an operation. A, C, D. You can assign materials, of course. You know, the bomb components would get assigned there. PRT, we spoke about it, which can be assigned to an operation. And D, trigger points. Right? It's uh, You can assign certain trigger points that when those points are reached in the operation, in the, in the particular order, something happens. Some trigger event gets triggered, right? So you should look at that uh, structure of the production order, that slide. That's an important one. Under what controlling scenario would we assign a settlement rule and calculate planned and tracked actual cost for a production order? Cost object controlling. Right? Uh, uh, sorry, it's uh, order related cost object controlling. Right, order related cost object controlling, then those two things come into play. Okay. Uh, again, this is part of the slide on production orders. If you are using order related cost object controlling, then it's required. In other words, what we are really saying here is, if we are interested in tracking costs for the production order, okay, then obviously we need to give these elements, the settlement rule and uh, uh, the cost tracking. Order related, if we are using order related cost object controlling, that is the scenario. At what level are costs for an order determined and what level are they managed? Operation, OP level I had written, yeah, that's a little, yeah. header level. Operation level they are determined, they are managed at header level. Okay, what has to take place before one can issue goods for a production order? Order release. Released. Order has to be released before you can. Uh, at what two time points can availability checks be performed for a production order? Order creation and order release. Creation and release. Right. Okay, availability checks for production orders check for the availability of? Material, PRT and machines. Material, PRT and machines. Right. PCD. No spare parts, no warehouse resources. BCD. What impact can material, uh, can goods issue for production order have on material reservations? Reduce the reservations. It can reduce reservations. In other words, you know, when the order was released, you placed a reservation for material, saying that 50 units are needed for this order. Right? It's still sitting in stock. But it's reserved. At the time you issue it, you reduce the release that reservation. That's all. Uh, 26. Uh, which of the following accounts are affected when goods issue occurs against a production order? AD. Stock and consumption. 27. The production order is updated when goods are issued against a release production order. True or false? True. You know, the order status. Uh, you, you want to track what's happening, obviously it has to be updated. Can goods issue against a product or production order generate a controlling document? Yes. Yes. Naturally. You're consuming, you're consuming costs. So. 
expenses, product costing, all of those implications are there. Uh, what two main possibilities exist for order confirmation? <laughs> 29 <laughs> 29 <laughs> right. uh, order related and operation related in other words what we're saying is we can confirm the order as a whole right we can say this whole order is complete and we produce 500 units or we can say each operation operation 10 is complete 20 is complete 30 is complete those are the two broad things, but of course, in the diagram, you'll realize that there are more subtle options. And which is the next question? Uh, which of the following represent possible detailed options for production order confirmation? Uh, time at setup was initiated and reaching a milestone, right? AC. Right, so you can confirm, you know, remember on the left hand side of the slide, you can confirm at various points setup initiated, setup completed, uh, you know, a piece, whatever work started, work finished, etc. Right, those are the, all the time event related things. And you can also say for the whole order as a whole, you can say uh, completion of operation 30 is a milestone. So then you could confirm at milestone based thing. Okay, so reaching a milestone would, would be another possibility, right? So A and C. 31, explain how automated goods receipt posting against a production order might work. At what point will this occur? Right. <laughs> How can you automatically? Add? Okay. So what we are saying is, right? But okay. See, what we are saying is, the production order produced fifty units, right? So we want to say in the system somewhere, without explicitly posting a goods receipt of fifty, we want this to somehow take place, right? At what point does the system know that fifty units were successfully produced? What event yeah. signifies to the system? Composting. Confirmation of production. Order. Confirmation of production. Right? Confirmation of production. When somebody confirms to the system saying, we produce 50, at that point, if you want to automate, you can automate that. And also post a goods receipt. Right? If you want, that's the one point at which it can be done. I'm not saying it should always be done. But if you want to automate it, that's where it can be done. Okay. 32. Explain how automated goods issue postings against a production order might work. This is goods issue, right? No, but goods issue, right? How do you know the goods were actually taken? You have to have concrete evidence that goods were taken. This is, yeah, confirmation. It can happen at confirmation time, right? What is the name given to this? Back flush. Back flush, right? Remember what, what that is? See, back flush is. It's when you, after everything, after the production order is done, then you take all the materials and back flush. Back flush, exactly. SAP to say you used this material, this material, this material, for right. this much more. So, one thing is to explicitly issue goods against, the, against your production order and then go and use it. So in which case you have to enter all those goods issue transactions. It's another thing to say, well, we keep all the materials ready. They use whatever they want. When they say, I finished producing so much, then you can say, okay, you produce so much, you must have used so much of these materials. Right? Example would be, you know, you produce five cars, you definitely use 20 tires. Okay? So they can say, okay, you use 20 tires. Okay. So that's the, at confirmation time, uh, you can also automatically post goods issues through the back flush mechanism. Okay. So otherwise it's not very clear as to how goods issue posting can be automatic. Unless somebody takes the goods, how can you issue it? You know, but it can be inferred. So at what point? Confirmation of order. Okay. What linkage to warehouse management might exist within goods receipt from a production order? So 33, what might be the warehouse linkage when you receive goods against a production order? 
linkage in the sense okay what what do where what does warehouse have to do when you finish production good they have to put the goods away right goods receipt is inventory management operation see when you say goods receipt in sap that's an inventory management operation but you got it they have to now post put it away transfer request transfer order all that right they have to physically move it into the warehouse into the interior of the warehouse you, yeah, you, I mean, it's just the need to move the goods in. Okay, so transfer request, transfer order, you could say those things. What accounts are updated when goods are received against a production order? Okay, so this one, the slide says uh, stock and plant activity account. Okay, I, I still don't know exactly what this plant activity account is. So I'll sort of uh, uh, do my research and get back. Stock and plant activity account. I'm not too sure what this plant activity account is. It must be the cost of the plant. Right. I'll, I'll do it. Yeah, could be that. I'll, I'll take a look and, and clarify that. I put that in nevertheless because I thought it's important. They might uh, ask that. So I just threw it in there for that. When a production order is settled, it's credited or debited? Credited. Production order. No, it's credited, right? You're saying this is the order and its costs are being allocated to various things. It's, a, it's credited. All others will be debited. Okay. Credited. 35 credited. 36. Which of the following scenarios might be well suited to use order related cost object controlling? Okay. Order related cost object controlling is when you want to control costs for every single production order. Right, you could do that, or you could just do cost of controlling for the product as a whole. You know, there may be many production orders that you put through, but you don't worry about the cost of each of these orders. Right, you accumulate the total cost and then you do that, right? So under what conditions might you want to control costs for every single production order? Not A. No. B C B C B C Now take a look at these. I mean it's it's there in the slide, so definitely you should look at these. Okay. So I think these are all the things that they might pick on to uh, to ask questions, so definitely make yeah. Yeah.